Hello everybody, Lurgs here, welcome to my channel and today it's how to assemble the IKEA Flyster shelving unit in under 30 minutes. And this should also be the same procedure for the IKEA Kallax unit, which is a slightly bigger shelving unit. And this is what it will look like once we've finished. And a really, really important top tip, when you're unboxing everything, make sure that you check everything inside the contents like all the screws the wooden dowels make sure everything is in there and most importantly of all check all the units which come out of the box all the shelving units and all the side panels and the reason i'm telling you this is because halfway through this build of this video i found some damaged units and we'll get to that when we reach them and I had to contact IKEA. So make sure you check everything thoroughly because if you have to send it all back, it's a right pain if you've half built it. <laughs> make sure you build this unit on a rug or a carpet because you do not want to damage it if it's on a tiled floor. These are the brackets to secure it to a wall if you want to, you don't have to do that. If you've got young children, you might want to secure it to a wall and I'll take you through that near the end of the video. Got lots of screws, wooden dowels, and we've got some nice soft feet which just stick on. And the only tool you're going to need today is a hammer. Do, 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 Kentosis. Do, 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 Kentosis. This is part of what you get with the package and I've never actually seen one of these before, but this is a really handy little tool. What you do is you take the Allen key, which is actually supplied, with everything that slides in the end and tucks into this groove here so just push it all the way down and that just gives you extra leverage when you're screwing in these longer screws just gives you a bit more power that's a really good idea right let's lay out the parts needed the first part we need to do is the side panel just make sure on that side panel when you put the other side panel on later on that all these holes are the same this one's got two holes extra as you can see in the top corners there and we've just got this end panel here make sure that the holes are on the inside you've got those two extra holes in the middle so just line that up and what we'll be doing is we'll be screwing in two of the long screws first now the holes are already pre-drilled, so you don't have to worry about that. You just need to make sure that when you're putting that long screw in that they line up and it starts biting into that hole. Oh Daisy, are you going to help me? Daisy, going to help me? Do you want to help me? Yeah. Take your long screws. Now, as with any screws or bolts, I always do them by hand first, as far as you can get them in. That just means it goes in nice and straight, nice and parallel. You do not want to go straight in with some kind of power tool and damage that thread if it doesn't go in straight. Once you've got it in a decent amount, you can then take the supplied Allen key and just tighten that up, then tightening it up clockwise. Now don't forget we've got lots of other screws to go around the whole unit as we build it. So don't tighten this absolutely as tight as you can get it, because what we'll do is right at the end, we'll do a final tightening of all the, all the screws. So you just need to make sure they're fairly tight, not super tight. With this bottom one you may just need to lift it up with your foot or just balance it on something just so you can get the allen key all the way around otherwise that may take a while that is the top part of the unit fixed to one of the side panels Daisy do you want to help me no you don't want to help me, do you? It's going to look good when it's finished, yeah? Okay. Then take two of the shorter wooden dowels. 
and we're just going to be securing one of these middle panels there's no specific way that these go in these are the same either end so it doesn't matter so the wooden dowel is going to, just going to join those two together so first just push it in with your fingers as far as it will go then take your hammer and just tap gently just to push it all the way home just be very careful with the hammer don't obviously do great big wax you don't want to damage that panel if you miss the wooden dowel so just a very gentle tap just to push it all the way home then push it into that top unit before you push that all the way home make sure you get some weight behind it otherwise you're just going to push that top panel out and you may damage those screws that you've just put in with the holes so just get a good bit of leverage bit of weight behind it and then pull it towards you and that is that one in Then take two of the longer wooden dowels and two of the shorter ones and the next stage is to put one of these middle shelving units in. Take these smaller wooden dowels, push those into the end. Then gently tap those all the way in with your hammer. So that is just going to slot into that side panel there. Again, when you're pushing that in, make sure you hold it on the other side because you're putting a bit of force on there, you don't want to push that out. Then take your longer wooden dowels, push them in with your fingers. Again, make sure you're holding it as you tap it in. Make sure that middle panel is lined up. And then gently tap it. If it wasn't lined up, obviously it would stop going all the way home. That's the top one in. Now let's do the one at the bottom. coming on. Now another center panel. Just slide that onto the wooden dowels. Again holding it from behind just so it doesn't slide away. Whatever you do, don't tap these panels with your hammer because you will damage it. Always just use your hand. Gently just push it in with the palm of your hand. And the next part is the next middle shelf. And this is why you check the contents before you start building it. Oh, what? No. Are you having a laugh? Oh, what? 
Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. Ah! I've actually got two panels here which are damaged. If one of them wasn't too bad, I could have just hidden that by having it underneath. You wouldn't have seen it. But one of them is really badly damaged. And then actually, when I look at the box, it's got a bit of a rip in here, which I'd never really noticed. Obviously, something has fallen on that, like a washing machine or something in transit. So I contacted IKEA, customer service, told them what part I needed. They said we can get out a replacement booked in for you as soon as possible. And I couldn't believe it. Customer service was absolutely amazing. Very impressed with IKEA customer service. And this is three days later and the replacement shelving panels have arrived. But before we get started on those, my daughter's going to make me a lovely cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for dipping your dressing gown in my tea. Right, let's get cracking. Just going to open up the package that's just arrived. Yeah. They've actually sent a pack of three and I only actually need two. They obviously come in packs of three. And actually it's a good job that they do come in packs of three because as I'll show you in a minute, one of these is actually already damaged, not badly damaged, but enough to think, hmm, I wouldn't really be happy and that was being fitted. It got a bit of damage on the corner here and another bit of damage just there. So I'm not going to need this one. I've got two really decent ones that they've sent. Customer service were fantastic. That hasn't cost me a penny. So let's get these fitted. I'm just going to show every part of this build. I don't want to skip anything. I know these middle shelves are the same as you go down. So the small wooden dowels in the end of the middle shelf. Gently tap those home. Then take your longer wooden dowels. And I'm just going to tap these gently home before I actually offer it up to the centre panel. Just going to make it a bit easier. So just gently tap it until it reaches the other side. And then it's a good idea just to give it a few more taps just so it's protruding out the end. And that makes it much easier when you're lining up because it will just start going into that hole already. So you can get it all lined up before you tap it home with a hammer. So the side bits in. The middle longer wooden dowels already slightly into the centre panel. So just take your hammer, make sure you're holding the unit so it doesn't slide away. I mean, you're only gently tapping it, so it shouldn't be a problem, but it's definitely worth just holding it on the other side. Just gently tap those home. Then we've got a center panel. The wooden dowels are already in there, which is the longer ones. So just line that up. Do not tap that with your hammer. Squeeze that in with the palm of your hand. Then take two long wooden dowels and two short ones. And the same with the next middle shelf. The shorter ones go in the side. And the longer ones go through the middle. Just 
gently tap those in. Then we're putting the longer ones through the middle. Gently tapping them until they slightly protrude on the other side, as we did with the previous shelf. Just see them both protruding there. Let's slot that home. This is the last of the actual shelving. We've got the side panel and the end part to put on. Just squeeze that into the side panel, line it up with the middle. And then holding it with your legs, you've got a bit of leverage. And then gently tap those home. One more centre panel to slot home. Really starting to come together now. Then take your shorter wooden dowels and we're tapping these into the side panels and the centre panel at the bottom there. Now tap these in as far as they will go. And then don't forget the two on the centre panel at the end. And now we're ready for the side panel. Now this is really, really important. Make sure that the two holes in the corners are matched with the other side there. Because if you get this upside down, it means if you're going to be securing it to the wall, they're going to be in the wrong place. But if you're not going to be securing it to the wall, it'll just look a bit odd. Especially if you've got OCD. So we're just lining this side panel up against those wooden dowels. And just gently squeezing and pushing it home. So that's the two holes in the corner, so that's the right way up. And squeezing it in all the way down. Great stuff, now we're ready to put the long screws in. As we did earlier, do them with your hands first, just to get them going. Then with the supplied Allen key, screw those in clockwise. Reasonably tight, but not super tight because we're just do one final tighten once the whole unit is complete. And just 
lifting it up slightly here. Brilliant. Right, now we've just got the end panel to go on. The shorter wooden dowels are already in the middle. Just line that up with those. Just push that home gently. Just squeezing that in, but I'm holding it with my leg just to give it something to push against. Then take your four long screws. May have to line that up, so just push that in, make sure it goes into the pre-drilled hole. If it doesn't feel like it's going in, just give that side panel a bit of a wiggle, bit of a move so it lines up. Once it starts going in, take the Allen key, tighten it up clockwise, and then do the other three as well. Okay, all those screws are now in. So what we'll do is we'll just go round to all eight screws at the top and the bottom and just give them one final tighten just to make sure they're all nice and tight. And then after that, we'll be fitting the foam feet. Now with this unit you can have it standing kind of vertical or you can have it on its side you know if you can have it as a TV unit or something in which case you would install the felt feet on a different end and just the last one to tighten up looking great then take your felt feet, you get eight of these. If you're doing it on the side, so you're having it as a TV unit, you can use all eight. I'm gonna be having it vertical upwards. Now don't stick these over the screws because if you ever need to tighten them up or take it all apart, you'll have to <laughs> remove the felt feet. So just have them slightly indented from the screws. Now these are really handy if you're going to be having this unit on a tiled floor or a wooden floor. Just going to lift it up. Look at that, fabulous. Now if you've got young children, you may want to secure this unit to the wall, but it's a good idea if you ever put lots of stuff in this and you don't want to secure it to the wall, just put all the heavier stuff at the bottom, like books and things like that. But if you do need to secure it to the wall, you can use these brackets. So you get two of these brackets with nice plastic white covers to just remove the cover. You've got two sets of holes here, depending on if your wall is slightly further away. You can have it in this part of the bracket or in this part. The screws come supplied, so I'm just going to screw this home just to show you how it actually works. You get this small bracket here, which you can slide left and right and up and down. It can sit in any of those grooves there. 
So then you would mark that on the wall. If you're screwing into timber, that's fairly easy, but if you're putting it into a wall that's made of mortar, that's slightly more difficult. You'll have to use a raw plug and a screw. Once you've done that, you can then put the cover over the top. I'm not actually going to be using these, but just to show you how that works. And this is the finished unit. Absolutely brilliant. Really pleased with that. And with the felt feet on, doesn't make any noise if you're moving it about. I'll tell you what, I think that definitely deserves another cup of tea. Whilst I'm having a cup of tea in the top right, there's a video on how to fix a wooden cupboard handle that keeps falling off. In the top left, how to clean new PVC gutterings so it stays cleaner for longer. And in the bottom left, the secret to super smooth curtains. That is a top tip. Hope that was useful. 